If you're glad you're at White Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church, ready for God to fill your cup. Listen, we have a bulletin. You can read the announcements. A couple of things that are not. Sign up sheets in the vestibule. Please sign it. It's going to be great. August 2nd and 3rd. Secondly, we have four huge tubs of ice cream. Anybody here like ice cream? You may not like ice cream when it's 100 degrees. Maybe we should have had coffee. All right. But we've got ice cream over there. We've got a cake over there. We misspelled your name. Not really. And um, but we've got a cake over there. We're going to have a great time after this thing's over. We had a great time in God's house. And uh, we're going to let God lead. Amen? So let's go to the Lord in prayer. I don't know if you know, Moses' brother-in-law, Abby's brother, is a pastor. And, uh, and I'm going to ask Brother Stewart, if you would, to kick us off in prayer tonight. Lord, we just pray that you would just uh, overflow this service with your spirit tonight. Yes. Lord, we pray that you would just help us to leave here knowing that we've met with you this evening. Father, we thank you for Moses and Abby. Lord, we thank you for their life and for their testimony for you. And Father, I pray for him tonight as he is being ordained into the ministry, Lord, that you would just strengthen his heart, encourage him, Lord, give him the resilience to stand in a world that's fallen down around him. Mm -hmm. And Father, I pray that you would just lead God and direct every step that he takes, every move that he makes in the ministry, Lord. Just help it to be bathed in prayer, Lord, and with your stamp of approval upon it. Father, again, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for a church that we can come and worship you in freely yes. tonight. Father, we thank you again for everything that you've done and for everything that you're going to do. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dr. Beer. Well, it's great to be part of this service, isn't it? It's what an exciting time. I remember years ago being ordained, and it's such a blessing. Good to see Moses' family and extended family. You're welcome to our service tonight. Thank you for being with us. We're going to start the service out with just a couple of songs. We've got a lot to do tonight, so let's stand and sing The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power. <clears throat> The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on Calvary The blood that gives me strength From day to day It will never lose its power It reaches to the heart mountain it's flowed to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose his power it soothes my doubt and calms my fear and it dries all my tears, the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. Blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Let's sing it reaches again. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he I know he holds the 
Stay in place. Instrumentalists, you keep playing. You turn around and fellowship. Greet somebody tonight. Let's make our way back to our, seat, our seats. And, you know, what I thought about as you were sitting there smiling, shaking hand, nugging neck, I said, man, I think there's a Bible verse that said God loves a cheerful giver. So we have taken care of the cheerful part. You have to take care of the giving part. Amen? And uh, let's bow our head. And, of course, as we normally do at White Oak Hill, with your head bowed right now, in the quietness of the moment, I want you to think of something you can praise God for. Thank him for something. God loves the heart of praise. Thank him right there with your head bowed. And then what an honor it is to give to the Lord. And Brother Jerry Belcher, would you mind leading us in that prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we do give you honor and glory and praise your holy name, Lord, yes. for your love for us as sinners, Lord, allowing your son to shed his blood on the cross for us, Lord. We know that he could have called 10,000 angels and took himself off that cross, but yet he loved us enough to stay on it. Lord, we... Thank you the song we just sung. Because he lives, we can face eternity, Lord, and know that one day we'll be with you in heaven. Lord, we just ask you to take this offering and use it for the building of your kingdom. Be with yes. Brother Moses as we ordain him as our youth pastor, Lord. Just yes. give him the blessings that we need to give him as a church, Lord, and love him the way we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Amen. Thank you so much. Well, it's that time where we set this uh, time aside and we take God's anointing, we bring him in and we anoint him and set him aside. But, you know, before we really get serious, before we bring the word, and, and it is an honor to have all of our guests here, by the way. Thank you for being here. I know half of you don't even like Moses, so thank you for showing up. Amen. And, um, uh, but what a journey it's been. How many of you remember the first time you met Moses? Keep your hand up if you regret it. No, I'm just teasing. You know we love him, love him, and uh, he's been wonderful. Our kids have grown to love him. We just are, are having a great time, Moses. We love you and Abby so much, and it's an honor to be here tonight with you. To share, Don't start crying. To share this time with you, and um, I told him there are tissues on the front pew, but we are a Baptist church. It's a dollar per tissue, and, uh, and, uh, but before we launch off, uh, we got some pictures. We just want to share some pictures with you. We're family. You know family looks at pictures, right? And so let's just take it a few pictures, look at a few pictures first. And we lay hands on them and set them to the ministry. Well, when you go into the New Testament, in the book of Acts, uh, the apostles were worn weary trying to take care of everything. And so there were deacons that were called to the side and they laid hands on them and they called them and ordained them to the work of being a deacon. Then when you get to Acts chapter 13, uh, the church again was just exploding. Gospels being uh, spread all over the Roman Empire. And, and, uh, and so they called Paul... Saul is what it says in your scripture in Barnabas. They called him over to the side and they laid hands on them and set them aside for the work of the ministry. Then you get into the pastoral epistles and we have in 1 Timothy uh, where if a man desires the office of a bishop, all right, elder, overseer, um, then he desireth a good thing. And so we lay hands on someone who's been called to do the work of the ministry uh, and share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Moses has been called... He's been licensed. He's passed his ordination test. He got a 71 out of, out of 100. And um, no, he didn't. He didn't. And, um, but he did great. Um, and, and so we are so proud of both of them. Uh, but before we give the charge, and we normally give a charge, and uh, we've got someone special here. One of the pastors at Hilltop, actually, uh, it was Moses' youth pastor, and now he's one of the pastors at Hilltop, uh, is, sacrificed his time over there at his his church to be with us tonight, and I know it's an honor for him to be a part of this service. Brother Mark Cash, would you please come up and just share a few words about Moses, maybe some things you know about him? <laughs> we can and, do amen. That. Let's have some fun, brother. Let's have some fun. <laughs> what, what an honor it is uh, to be here for Abby tonight. Uh, no, I am. I am thankful just just to be asked to be a a, a, a little bit a little part of this this service for Moses and, and and of course Abby. We are we're so very proud of them. And I had some parents some parents some some of Moses' family when they saw me said, "Oh, thank you for being here." I I had to be here, brother. Hal asked me to come. I didn't really want to. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. <laughs> it really truly is an honor. And um, I'm very, of course, as you guys are very proud of Moses, very proud of. Uh, of Abby and brother Al, brother Hal called me uh, last week and or texted me I think and um, we talked on the phone and and uh, he said I want you to be a part and and just just share some personal things about about Moses before we actually get into the the charge the ordination and so uh, you know I, I started thinking and and um, I wrote five words down uh, and I, I guess as when you're a preacher you got to have some kind of outline I even alliterated it. Um, uh, Brother, Brother Barry, you'll be happy, uh, proud of me, maybe. First word I wrote down was fun. <clears throat> the Bible says in Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Uh, and, and so I, I got to thinking about Moses. I got to thinking about uh, you know his, his, his life from the time I knew him. I, I asked him right before service. I think you said you were 11 uh, when you came to Hilltop. And uh, fun. We had a lot of fun. I think about Moses, I think a lot of, a lot of laughter, a lot of good times, and, and y'all know him, y'all have been around him, he's a blast. <clears throat> I was debating on whether or not I was going to share this story, Brother Hal, but you opened the door wide open. Share the story, he said. You said the name on the cake was spelled wrong. 
That's okay, because apparently he don't know how to spell his name either. <clears throat> Some of y'all know the story from my understanding, but uh, I will, you'll probably hear me call him Moss tonight more than I will call him Moses. And, and his family all knows the story, and I understand a few of y'all do, but uh, when he was a teenager, this is, this is before Abby, uh, so it's okay, uh, but he was, he, a pretty girl was talking to him. He was, he was a little rattled because apparently he wasn't used to talking to pretty girls. And she asked him, and, and I'm making a long story short, she asked him how to spell his name, and he said M-O-S-S. Of course, he had a, his whole basketball team was with him, and they all died laughing. And, and from then on, we've called him Moss. And so uh, it's okay if it's spelled wrong to Kate because he don't know how to spell his name either. <clears throat> But no, I mean, from, from stuff like that to him jumping off cars, I just heard that story tonight and getting hurt. It just camps and conferences and retreats and, and, and teen activities. Uh, Moses was always a lot of fun to be around. Uh, and, and still is, for that matter, because you never know what, what might happen. But uh, I, 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 I thought of fun. The second word I wrote down was family. And as I knew would happen, I knew there would be a whole section of, of Moses' family here tonight. Um, if you hadn't already figured it out, he has a huge family. And, and like, you'll never meet all of them. It's like they keep coming. I, well, did I go with you on your senior trip to New York? We met quite a few. In fact, Morari's here somewhere. That's the first time I met you was in New York on that trip. And then I, I went with Isabel this past year. She graduated. And, and his, Moses' his sister. And we met like three other family members. I thought I'd met them all. And it's just like they just, they just keep coming. They, just, they have a huge family. But as you can tell, and it's obvious, they have a very close family. Uh, in fact, you know, you see that uh, not just that they love each other, they love other people. Uh, they love the Lord. It becomes obvious. And, and if you hang around them, you'll, you'll start feeling like a part of their family. And, and I've always appreciated that about, about his family. But... And I, you've seen that with him and Abby and, and their love for each other, but, but also their love for the Lord that reaches beyond just their blood. It reaches to the, the body of Christ. It reaches to other people. Uh, and, and their ministry, I'm, I'll say more about it in just a second, but uh, they, they just minister in our church and reach out to people. And they're always bringing people to church. And Moses, from a very young age, was a big part of that. Uh, and I've always appreciated that about you, Moses, that you jump right in with your mom and dad and, and would serve, whether it's an Awana, we were talking about some of the bus ministry areas that y'all would go into tonight, and, and always involved, never complained, and, and at least if you did, I didn't see it. Mom and dad may have saw it. But just always there involved. I always appreciated that about him, about his family. I wrote down the word fun. I wrote down the word family. I wrote down the word faith. I told him not. I don't remember when he got saved. You did get saved, right? Okay, just making sure. <clears throat> I don't remember the day you got saved, but I do remember watching you grow and, and mature both uh, physically and spiritually. I, I watched you grow in your faith from an aggravating little boy to an aggravating young adult. Uh, no, in all seriousness, I have watched you grow into a man that, that I believe God is using to do great things and will continue to do great things. Uh, I, I do remember you answering God's call on your life to, to, to go into ministry and to preach the Gospel. Uh, and, and just your faith in God. To, uh, putting your faith in Him, but trusting Him to use your life and, and stepping out in faith, going to Bible college and now in ministry. Uh, it's just something that, that I appreciate tremendously. And then I wrote down the word faithful. Uh, the definition of the word faithful is loyal, constant, and steadfast. Moses was, was one, of those te- one of those teenagers that you could always count on. You know, the one that you don't want there, but they all show up anyway. That was my, No, I, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> if we had a teen activity, he was there. If we were doing something at the church, he was there. Services, I mean, it, and by the way, can I say, because I know he's working with young people here, the you parents that are here, it's amazing how the faithful teenagers turn into faithful adults. You want your young people to serve God when they get older, then you keep them in the house of God. You, you, you keep them faithful. Uh, to, to what's going on around church. But Moses was, was always there, faithful to serve. Again, not just, he wasn't just there, you were involved uh, in, in our bus ministry and with our kids and always just, just doing something and, and, and also faithful to God. I know Brother Hal is going to give you a charge in a few minutes, but let me say 
say to you, stay that way. Keep that drive, that, that hard work, that willingness to just serve. Uh, and be faithful to the Word of God, faithful to preach the Word. And then, the last thing I wrote down was the word future. Um, I'm looking forward to what God has for you. And we don't know how long we have on this earth. We, we don't know if Christ is going to tarry His coming. Uh, but I'm excited to see what God does through you and your ministry. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, if the future is anything like the past, I can't wait to see it because it's going to be a blast. Um, but in all, in all seriousness, Moses, I am uh, extremely proud of you and Abby, both of you. And, and um, You've come from good families. I mentioned family, both of you. And, and it's good to see you. Ray and Paula here as well, and, he, and Stuart and Taylor. and um, just You've both been taught the right thing. You've been in the, in the Word of God. You've, been, you've seen Christian home. You know what it is. And, and I, I'm excited to know that, that you're continuing that and going to continue that. And so, uh, let me just say thank you for letting me have part in the service. Thank you for letting me have a part in your life. Uh, and and I'm, um, I'm truly blessed and, and honored uh, that... Uh, that God is using, that you guys are, are submitting yourself to the plan of God, the will of God for your life. And so stay faithful. Stay close to God. Stay in His Word. Be faithful to preach the Word. We love you guys. Uh, we're super proud of you. And um, keep on keeping on. About um, how large your family is, and of course, expanded fa- extended family. It occurred to me that I met, I think, Three new people in your family today. And then it occurred to me this, because he's such a jokester. How many of you know in the Batman series that there's a character called the Riddler? And there's a big question mark in front of him. I wonder if your family just has question marks and they got a picture of the Riddler, and then when they trick somebody like me, you, they're not really your family. They come up and lie about it. Then, and they say, but he believed me. You know, that Chinese dude I met the other day, I didn't really believe he was your family, but... Probably has a copy of the Riddler. Anyway, we're glad you're here. And uh, would you take your Bible, turn to John chapter 21, and that's where we'll find a passage of Scripture for our charge this evening. John chapter 21. First Corinthians chapter 13 is you're finding your place in John 21. Paul, when he's writing to the church at Corinth, that's a messed up church, a um, very dysfunctional church, allowing sin in the church. When he's writing this church, he said, love never fails. Moses, that's where I want to go tonight for you and Abby, because there are going to be times in ministry where it's going to be really hard to love people. There are going to be times in ministry where you're going to feel like that you just are full of stress. There are going to be times in ministry that you feel like you're not making headway. You're trying to run a 100-yard dash in a tornado going the opposite way. There are going to be times in ministry where it's going to be really, really tight, really tough. There are going to be times in ministry that you fail. You just are going to absolutely fail. You're going to boggle. You're going to do some things wrong. And you're going to know you're going to fail because the devil is going to tell you how much of a failure you are. And, uh, and so in John chapter 21, uh, I'm going to begin reading in verse 9. We normally stand. You just keep your seat. And, uh, but I want to take a look at somebody who uh, very easily could have let his past haunt him. Very easily could have said, I'm not worthy to move forward. Very easily could have gotten distracted and, and not moved on. And, uh, and you know, the devil's an expert at helping you remember how bad you are. He really is. He wants you to believe you're worthless. And God wants you to know you have value. As a matter of fact, you have so much value tonight that God would send His only begotten Son to die for you. Not just for the world. That's how valuable you are as an individual And that's how badly God wants you to be a part of the family of God. John chapter 21, I hope you're there. I'm going to begin reading in verse 9. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. And Jesus Jesus said to them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. And Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Bell started to go off. Jesus said to them, Come and dine. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who art thou? Because they knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, 
Lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto them, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he asked him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee, whither thou wast not. And so, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that we can know that we have a God who gives second chances. We have a God who forgives us of our sin. We have a God who calls men, knowing that men are not perfect, knowing that, Lord, we're not, we don't have a lot to offer but, Lord, little as much when it's in your hands. And, Father, we thank you for Moses and Abby. We thank you for their desire to see souls saved, their desire to see uh, men and women come to a closer walk with you, become, Lord, just excited about the things of God. We thank you, Lord, that we get to be a family together, that, Lord, we get to shine our light together. And, Lord, may we shine our light for Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we just pray that you'll open up our hearts and help us to receive the word. And may we know the word isn't just for these two. The word is profitable to all who hear it. And Lord, we just pray that we're receivers tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And so you would think right here, as Jesus is talking to Peter, and you start reading this, you know, the world would say, hasn't Peter done enough? He denied him right there. And the, oh, when Jesus needed him the most, Peter was by the fire cursing and denying him three times, then running away. And so the world would throw stones at Peter, but God didn't see Peter's past. He saw Peter's potential. And Moses and Abby, that's exactly what God sees tonight. I cannot tell you what tomorrow holds for both of you, but I can tell you God holds tomorrow. He knows you. He would not have called you had he didn't, if he didn't have a wonderful plan for you tomorrow and next week and next year and the years after, even after the rapture, Moses. No, I'm kidding, but yeah, you know, we, God's called you. He's, he knows what's going to happen. He knows the potential that's in you. And by the way, the devil knows that when God calls somebody like you guys and calls you Moses... The devil knows that there's something special about you. And so you know what the devil's going to do? Now you've got a target. All of us have a target, but ministers really have a target. Their influence, the domino effect is there. And so when we see, have a service like this right here, and the devil sees a service like there, he's going to try to tempt you. He's going to try to dissuade you. He's going to try to cause doubt in your mind. He's going to try to do a lot of things. And again, you're going to fall. A just man falls seven times, but then what? He rises up again. And with God's grace, you can rise up again, but you've got to do it in God's strength. And so we see here uh, that uh, he calls Peter, and, and, and just a real quick challenge I want to give you is when you start ministering, and you've already been ministering, here's what the church needs. The church doesn't need somebody to lord over it. They need somebody to love it. And that's really where I want to focus tonight, because the sheep, the church, need the right shepherd. They need the right man. And in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 through 7, we find the qualifications of a right man. You've met those qualifications, but I want to read it again for the body, and I want to remind you, because when you say, I want to go into the work of God, work of God you're saying, I'm going to keep these qualifications. There are many a man that's gone through the gate saying they're going to preach the gospel till they die, and they didn't finish the race. And you're only going to finish the race if you keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. So here he goes. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop... Or an overseer, again, pastor, elder, uh, he desireth a good work, a bishop must be blameless. In other words, there shouldn't be, you're not going to be sinless, but there shouldn't be something somebody can hold against you. Um, the husband of one wife, do you only have one wife? I'm just making sure we didn't miss anything here, okay? Vigilant, and vigilant means you're not lazy, okay? You're really, you know, you're industrious, you're trying to do the work of God. Sober means serious, you take the work of God seriously, of good behavior. Can we do that, Mo? Can we do that, all right? Of good behavior, given the hospitality. And you know, given the hospitality back in the first century would have been big because there would have been a lot of itinerant preachers and missionaries going through. It's opening up their home, receiving people into their home, taking care of the people that were doing the work of God. That's what it means. It means when we get people in here visiting, and, and some of you are really good at seeing our guests come in, coming in, taking them to lunch, inviting them out. That's given the hospitality, making somebody feel welcome. And that's what preachers are supposed to do. And preachers' wives, and, and Abby, it's not always easy. I cannot tell you, over the decades I've been preaching, and I'm sure Dr. Bear's the same way, 
Any pastor or the guy will tell you at the last minute, we'll say somebody's coming to the house for dinner and there's nothing for dinner. And so you're going to have to, at the last minute, do something. I don't know what it is. Raymond noodles. I don't know. And, um, and so, but we, at the last minute, are going to be doing something. And, but that's what it means. It means we're doing it for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to cost us something. But if it didn't cost us anything, it wouldn't be sacrifice. Moses, it goes on, the next qualification is apt to teach. And the Bible tells us we're not to just lead people to the Lord. We're to disciple them. We're to teach them. And so we have to be apt to teach. In other words, we have to have an inclination to want to teach. And I know you have that. We've watched you. We've observed you. I know that you have that ability. Not given to wine. Okay? So you can't follow your mother's example. You've got to stay away from alcohol. All right? You've got to stay away from those ferment. And I'm teasing, by the way. It's her dad. And um, <laughs> and so, um, but you can't. You can't dip into the fermented beverage. Of course, we all know those are things that are just... Not a striker. In other words, you can't be looking for a fight. Have you ever met people that are always clenched fist? <clears throat> and if they didn't clench their fist, they talk like they clenched their fist, and they just weren't pleasant people to be around because it looked like they wanted to just pick a fight. That's what it means. Don't pick a fight. And by the way, if your heart is full of love, you're not going to want to pick a fight. It's amazing how much you can tolerate when you have a loving spirit. It goes on to say, um, uh, not greedy of filthy lucre. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You can't want money all the time, which is a good thing. And um, being patient. You're going to have to be patient with sheep. Okay? And, and, and I'm just letting you know that, that people in the church, not all people in the church, act great all the time. At any given moment, there's some halos that aren't shining. That's who people are. But you know what? At any given moment, your halo's not shining. My halo's not shining. You know, that's who we are. We're not home yet. And so we have to recognize we have to be patient with individuals. Um, It says, uh, not a brawler, uh, which means blessed are the peacemakers. You'd be a peacemaker, not covetous. You say, preacher, what do you mean not covetous? Well, you know what preachers are guilty of? Well, I wish I had a ministry that large. I wish I could win that many souls to Christ. I wish I had a bus ministry. I wish I dressed that nice. Are you with me? We desire things like that, and, and you've got to fight that urge because God gives the increase. Praise God for the Jeremiah's in the world who might have a church of 20. Praise God for the Isaiah's in the world. Praise God for the Ezekiel's in the world that God calls them to a place that's a hard place, a difficult place, but they stay on it. Like the church at Smyrna, they stay at it. Praise God for the preachers who are rejected, but they're rejected for God's name. I believe there's a special place in heaven for that person. Because, see, a lot of times when you pastor a church like this one or you pastor a church like Hilltop, we get a lot of praise here. We get a lot of, a lot of glory here. We get to receive a lot of blessings here. Boy, that guy, that church at 20, 25, 30, he looks around and sees God a blessing, but he stays with it. I don't know what your ministry is going to hold. I hope God blesses you with a lot of souls. I hope you see people saved. Hope, but you know what? God can make an Ezekiel out of you, an Isaiah out of you, a Jeremiah out of you. And if that's okay, if that's where God wants you, as I just got through reading in verse 18, you go where God wants and do what God needs you to do until you cross the finish line and go home. Pastor Rube is back in the back, and brother, I'm glad you were able to make it tonight. Our promotional director is right back there. He can tell you that probably tonight as I'm preaching, there might be a dozen pastors across North Carolina that are the Jeremiah's that are struggling, and yet they're faithful, and their hands on the plow. And so I want to encourage you to keep your hand on the plow. Rule your house well. Well, if you can't rule your house well, you can't rule the church. You've got to rule your house well. Having your children with subjection, uh, under subjection, and, and again, seriousness, raising your children under the admonition of God's word. That's what God tells you to do. He tells you to do that. And I'm looking forward to children, by the way. Can I get an amen, Sergio? Amen. Ray, can I get an amen? Bless God are the pastors with lots of children. That's not in the Bible. That's just how. Moreover, you've got to have a good report of those that are without, lest there be a reproach and a snare of the devil. Your neighbors need to speak fondly of you. The people outside the church need to speak fondly of you because that's our mission field. And those are the qualifications and, and the church deserves a man with those qualifications. You have those right now. But you know what the devil wants to do? He wants to take you down a narrow passageway and falling on one of those. All right? And you need to make sure your eye is straight, your nose are straight, you're in God's word, you're full of God's spirit, and you're doing God's work. Sheep need the right man. Not only do sheep need the right man, they need a man that's going to have the right heart. And that heart being full of love. And that's what we find Jesus telling Peter, I want you to love my sheep. See, it's going to be that kind of love when the sheep fall into sin. 
repetitive sin. Well, pastor, and I see you in my office. Pastor, I talked to that teenager. I told her not to do that. I told him not to do that. And they went and did it anyway. And then I'm going to have you call Pastor Mark, and Mark's going to tell you you did the same thing. Okay? It's proven medically that teenagers are brain dead. No, I'm teasing. How many of you might think that, though? Amen? But we love you, teenagers. We love you! Most of the time. And so, that's who they are. But it's going to take, it's going to take love when you sit with a teenager four hours and they go out and do the exact opposite of what you told them to do, what you counseled them to do, Abby. It's going to take love to get you past that because you're going to want to get mad at them. All right? You can't get mad at them. You've got to love them. Sheep get dirty. They fall into the mire. All right? They get their wool gets caught up in the bushes and you're going to have to untangle them, and they're going to go to the same bush, and you've got to untangle them, and it's love that's going to keep you being patient and being gentle and watching over that sheep. And despite all the warnings you give t- teenagers, I wrote this, it's going to take love that, that helps you not say, I told you so. And instead of saying, I told you so, I want you to say, God loves you so. They get entangled in a bush. God loves them. And he calls you to show that love. He calls you to show that patience. He's calling you to help them find the right way over and over and over again. And it's going to take you being filled with the Spirit to do that. But they deserve that kind of shepherd. We live in a society where feelings weigh more than the Word. I've had discussions with people here in the last week and went to the Bible, showed them without a doubt, here's what the Bible says. And their answer to me was, with tears streaming down their cheek, well, I just don't feel that's the way it ought to be. And I said, listen, I'm just, I'm just a reporter. I didn't write the news. I just report the news. Okay? This is what God says. This is what you ought to do. She goes, well, I just don't feel that's right. I said, that's between you and God. But now you know the truth. I say, and, and so what we have to do is we have to just keep telling them the word. Tell them the word. And, and feelings will weigh a lot in today's society. Our society and our churches are being, really, a lot of decisions are being made because people feel it ought to be that way. And it's contrary to the word of God. But we need to stay in the word of God. This is our truth. This keeps us from error. Stay in the truth. Don't get caught up in this, this postmodernism of feelings determining our faith. The Word of God determines our faith. We park right here. And so you're going to have that happen in your life. And, and uh, a good pastor is going to love them past their hate. Because when you tell them they're wrong, they're going to hate you. All right? They're going to hate you. Matthew 18, 12 and 13. How think ye? If a man have a hundred sheep and one of them are gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go to the mountains and seek that one which has gone astray? And if so, he find it. Verily I say to you, he rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which not astray. I had a fellow one time who was in uh, our former church. And they were in Sunday school, very faithful people. And, and I'm not going to give you too many details because somebody might be watching. And, um, uh, but the end, end result was he had an affair with somebody in the church. And... Um, the husband of the lady he was having an affair with called me at 2 o'clock in the morning. I get out of my bed, and, and uh, we go to the place where they are, and I knock on the door and uh, catch them right in the act uh, uh, together uh, in the room, and they come to the door. I didn't want to answer the door, but you know your pastor's kind of stubborn, and um, so I'm banging on the door, so either the law's coming or they're coming. Well, they came, and they told us to get out. And so the next day I called him when we met, and here, here were his words to me. He said, Pastor, you've done what God called you to do. Now go to your office and don't call me again. I said, okay, I'm just here to give you the word. I want you to know I love you. God loves you, but you're going to be chastised for this sin. You are not going to find joy sinning against God. And so I went to my office. We have a, today, we have a very good relationship. Today, he's right with God. He's not with that lady anymore, just like I told him he wouldn't be with that lady. And, um, but you know what? I loved him past that. And it's going to be a walk with God that causes you to get past those moments where somebody says they hate you. They don't want anything to do with you. Just get out of their life. But you can't do that. You've got to love them. And you've got to be persistent. And you've got to pray for them. And those moments will cause them to realize, you know who truly loves me? God loves me and my pastor loves me. And you're going to do that. All right? But the sheep need, the, need a shepherd with the right kind of heart. And that's a heart full of love. And, and lastly, a sheep need leaders who are going to serve. Well, we have a lot of leaders out there that want to be served. A lot of leaders out there want money. A lot of leaders out there want ministry opportunities. A lot of leaders out there, they don't want to serve. But you know what? A loving heart will have no problem serving. In John chapter 13, and I know all of you know this, probably this passage of Scripture in John 13, Jesus' last night before he's crucified, you know what he's doing? 
he's serving. He's washing the apostles' feet. And he's, he says, I want you to see what I'm doing, and then I want you to do it. And, and you know, we want our feet washed, but we, don't want, we, we need a servant's heart. And I wrote here, it's one thing to see a leper. It's another thing to touch a leper. It's one thing to see the demon eyes. It's another thing to exercise a demon. How did you feel last week whenever I took you with me and we had to go exercise a demon? Were you a little bit nervous when we got that phone call? Huh? Well, you ought to be nervous when we get those kind of phone calls. Amen? And, uh, but you know, what do you tell a guy who's demon-possessed? Do you tell him you're not going to go see him? No, you make sure you're prayed up and make sure you know the Word of God and you go equipped with the Word of God and the power of God and the Spirit of God and you ask God to do it. Okay? It's one thing to see, sense a need to pray. It's another thing to spend all night in prayer. It's one thing to see hungry people. It's quite another to feed the people. It's one thing to see dirty feet. It's quite another thing to wash those dirty feet. See, servanthood is it's kind of popular today. And I wrote here, we can idolize it, praise it, memorize it, cheer it, rally around it. But can we live it? The church needs pastors that live it. The church needs pastors who love them enough to serve them. Serve them when it's convenient and serve them when it's inconvenient. And so a faithful minister is going to stay qualified because he's going to stay full of love. Love for the Lord and love for the sheep. And so Moses, I charge you to be faithful to God. And just as he told Peter in our text, he said, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. And that's my charge to you is whenever you get ordained, you love them. Even when they're not really lovable, you still love them because love never fails. Abby, God will use you mightily as long as your heart is full of love. I read back in 1957, the First Brethren Church of Sarasota, Florida, they had a groundbreaking service for their building. And ordinarily, a church will get a few shovels and certain people will turn over a few chunks of dirt. But they, they recalled the words of Jesus, take my yoke upon you. So the church decided to borrow an old one-horse plow and harness and, and, and take their strongest young men, attach their strongest young men to the plow. But those two men didn't move it one centimeter. That, pl- that ground was hard. And so they pulled and pulled and nothing happened. So the building committee, the whole building committee grabbed that plow and they pulled and nothing happened. And so then the church officers, the deacons, you know it's hard when the deacons get involved, okay? And so the deacons get there and the Sunday school teachers get there and all the teachers get there and they pull and they didn't move it. Finally, the pastor says, I need everybody in the church to come and grab this plow so we can break this ground. And so every member of the congregation who was present took hold of the rope and with every member pulling together, the plow moved, and the ground was broken. If Moses is going to have an effective ministry, it's a lot easier when the whole team gets involved. And Moses, I challenge you to have a heart full of love, and Abby, I challenge you to have a heart full of love, and church, I challenge you, let's be the team that makes it easier to break the ground. Amen? And so Moses, what we'd like to do now, if you accept the charge, is we'd like to lay hands on you and go ahead and ordain you into the work of the many. Did you accept that charge? All right, would you come up here, please? And Abby, I'm going to have you join him. Won't you come up here with him? We're going to pray over you, okay? And um, I would like every, just get on your knees right here. Can you do that for me? Of course, you see Moses tend my sheep. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, I'd like for every ordained individual to come up here and lay hands on this couple as we separate them and ordain them into the ministry Moses, you particularly, we're ordaining Moses into the ministry. Abby, you're by his side. We don't ordain women, by the way, for those of you that are our guests. I don't think we ordain women. But let me tell you something. Every good pastor has a good wife. I mean, we need them. All right, I want you guys to come up here and lay hands on Moses if you would. Honey, I want you to be with Abby. I want our leadership team to come up. Moses, I mean, uh, Pastor Reuben, I want you to get on this side. Pastor Reuben is a promotional director for the state of North Carolina, for those of you that may not know who he is. He's also the former pastor, nine years here at White Oak Hill, and, um, and certainly a great man of God. We are honored that you're here for this ceremony. Amen? And uh, would you lead us in prayer as we separate Moses into the ministry along with his wife, Abby? Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we bow in your presence this evening. Lord, we thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, he came to this earth, Lord, to redeem mankind, fallen, 
mankind so that we can have a right relationship with our Father in heaven. Father, through that, you call men. Yes. You call disciples to follow you. You gave them the command. And you gave them the charge to go and make disciples. Lord, you ordained and set apart chosen ones to, to be shepherds, to be pastors, to be elders in the church, to be yes. leaders. Yes. And Father, we thank you that Moses' heart was tender to that call. And Father, we thank you that he's answered that call. Yes. Father, we thank you that you have equipped a woman to come beside him to fulfill that call. Yes. Father, we believe that it is a call, Lord, as you uh, call Moses into the ministry, Father, that you worked in her heart, Lord, to come alongside of him and be a help meet to him in fulfilling your call on his life. And now as he's ordained into this gospel ministry, Father, we pray that your hand will be upon him. Oh, how the church needs the power of God upon it today. Yes, Lord. How men need the power of God as they stand and proclaim the word of God. Amen. It's time to hug. All of God's people said, Amen. I'm not making any money tonight. Just no one. So we have something for you, and um, I would like the church to see this certificate of ordination with the undersigned upon the recommendation and request of the White Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church at Bailey, North Carolina, which had full and sufficient opportunity for judging the God given gifts. That's the reason it took a year and a half and not a year, by the way. <laughs> uh, Christian experience, call of the ministry, and views of Bible doctrine hereby certify that Sergio Moses Glop was solemnly and publicly set apart and ordained to do the work of the gospel ministry by authority and order of the White Oak Hill Free Will Baptist Church at Bailey, North Carolina, on the 14th day of July, 2019. And there's the ordaining council signatures right there. Welcome to the ministry. We love you. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the ministry. So we did something different tonight. We normally give a Bible after the charge. We'll give a Bible. But last year, if you remember, we gave Moses and a really nice minister's Bible already. Um, it is my belief that there are not enough pastors retiring that are ready for retirement. They just aren't. They're not preparing for retirement. They thought that rapture would come, and Debbie and I were talking about that earlier. So hopefully Jesus will come back soon. But, Moses, what we've done is we've placed a small gift in your retirement account. Okay. And I know you set up a retirement account. We want you to start preparing for retirement now. It's easy when you do it when you're 22. It's hard to do it when you're 62. Okay? And uh, so congratulations, and we love you both. And uh, I think it's time for ice cream. Do you want to say anything? I want to say thank you for all of you who have been part of my life. Thank you for all of you who have been part of my life the last couple years, and even my family who have been there all my life, and Mark Cash who has been there since I was 11 and just... Because of you guys, it's, I'm able to be here. Um, because of your prayers, because of you showing me the way to be faithful. Um, even Miss Shirley reminded me how, last year how many days I had left till graduation. Just bless me with love and thank you. Amy, don't start crying. Quit talking. There you go. You want to say anything? Well, if you want to say something, you can over at the Family Life Center because I believe it's time for ice cream. Ice cream and cake and soda, we have it all. And for the kids, we even have ice cream cones. 
And uh, so we'll go ahead and stand up. We'll be dismissed in prayer. And Dr. Bear, part of uh, the four years of education that Moses received, well, actually, it took you six years, didn't it? No, the four years that he was there, Dr. Bear played an important part of his life. And Dr. Bear, I'm going to ask you if you would to bless the food, and then if you would uh, uh, just close us in prayer. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this so important and precious uh, occasion. We thank you for Moses and Abby. What a blessing they are to our ministry. Um, we thank you for this uh, wonderful day in his life. We thank you for putting your hand upon him and calling him into your ministry. We pr play, pray your blessing. We already have seen your blessings in his life. We know you're going to continue to do so. We pray your blessings upon our fellowship and the food.